What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, you are going to learn how to use the camera functionality of your Android phone in an app. So if you're building an Android app and you need to use the camera, then you need to take care of some steps. And in this video, you're going to see all of those steps that are required in order to basically use the camera for your application to then get the images that were taken and reuse them in the application. And for this, you should know how permissions work. So if you haven't checked out the permissions video on this channel yet, then definitely check that one out. And also don't forget to hit that like button so that I know that you're interested in Android content and that I should put out more of it. All right, so let's get started. we're going to see how we can now go ahead and use the camera in order to select an image or shoot an image first and then select that image in order to also display it as an image view. So pretty much get an image from the camera to our application. As you can see here, now the image is inside of this little image view. Hereby, we're not going to take care of the specifics of how to make the image view beautiful and how to make the app beautiful, but really just the functionality to start the intent to get the image and then to get the result of that activity, so to speak, to display this in our image view. Therefore, I have an app combat image view here. You can set any settings you want, then a button which allows us to start the intent in order to ask for permissions. And then of course, if we have the permissions to start the activity to display the camera application in order to then make an image and of course then take that image and display it in the app. So in order to do that, we need to prepare several things. So first of all, we need to have the permissions. Therefore, we can go to our manifest and here we need to use the permission for the camera. So here, we're just gonna use Android permissions camera. All right, so this is the only permission that we're going to need in this example. And if you want to know more about permissions, then definitely check out the video on permissions. This is not specifically for that or this video here, because it's really just about the camera functionality. Then we need a companion object in which we store our variables, which are our constants, so to speak. So here the camera permission code will be one and then the camera value will be two. So one of them will be for the permission code, the other one will be for the intent and the activity for result. That will make a lot more sense once we get into it. So first of all, we need of course our camera on click listener. So let's set that. And then the idea here is to first of all, check if we have permissions. So that's generally always what we need to do if we want to use the camera. So check if we have permission and which permission are we looking for? Well, specifically the camera permission and we check if the permission was granted. So if that's the case, then we want to use this camera functionality. So here comes in the interesting part. So we have this intent, which will be an intent that goes to, and here we need to import it real quick, which goes to the media store dot action, or it's just going to use this action image capture functionality. So we prepare this intent to start our camera pretty much. That's what this does. All right, and then we can start the activity for result with the intent. And what shall we open? Well, we pass in the camera, which is our variable that we created here. So this constant here. So we start the activity for result. And as you know, when we do that, we need to pass in the intent that we want to start and then the code. To be more precise, the request code. Now, of course, you can call this one request code if you want to be super clear about this. All right, so here we are passing the request code when starting the activity for a result. So we're pretty much waiting for a result. Now, of course, if we don't have permission, then we want to 
ask for permission and I'm just gonna use the standard format here, activity compat, request permissions, and then you need to pass in the activity in which you want to request that. The array of different permissions in our case is just one permission, which is the camera permission. And then we need to pass in the permission code as we prepared it up here. By the way, this video is part of my complete Android masterclass, which is a 45 hour long course in which you learn everything that there is to know about Android app development and you become a real Android developer. So if you want to build a bunch of cool projects and learn Android app development along the way, definitely check out the link in the description below. And of course, don't forget to hit that like button for this video. All right, now of course we need to do something in order to get the permissions running. So here on request permissions result. So this one here, that's going to be the one that we use in order to execute something once we get a permissions result. So either the user allowed it or he denied it. So I check if the permission request code, so request code is equal to the camera permission code. It's because we're talking about permissions, right? So here the request code, if that's the same, then I want to check if the grant results, so this one here, this array that we get here, as you can see, is an array of integers. If that is not empty and current results at position zero is permission granted. So here, package manager dot permission granted. All right, so if permission is granted, then I want to pretty much do the same thing as we've done before with the intent. So here I want to start this activity for result here. So I'm gonna paste that in here as well. All right, and otherwise, if we didn't get the grant result, so here in this else block, I just want to write a little toast and say, yeah, the permission was denied. So I'm just gonna write something like, oops, you just denied the permission for camera. Don't worry, you can allow it in the settings. Okay, so this is the on request permission result. So this is again, nothing new if you watch the permissions video. Now comes the new part, the interesting part when it comes to the camera, because now we combine what we have seen with activity for result and the usage of cameras. Because what we get from an activity for result is on activity result. So this function here is automatically then called once we get the result. So once the user, for example, selected an image with the camera. So now we can go ahead and check if the result code is going to be activity result okay. And hereby we need to import activity. And if that's the case, then we can check if the request code is equal to our camera request code. So here, camera request code. Because if that's the case, then we can display the data that we are passed from an activity result into our IV image, which is in our activity main, this image view, which was called IV image. So then we can set that image view to be the image that we have just received as the result of on activity re result, which pretty much is a result on start activity for itself. Okay, so now we can go ahead and here get the data and I'm saving that in a thumbnail, which is of type bitmap. And we get that, we need to import it real quick, then we get that from data dot extras. So here data that was passed has some extras and from there 
we want to get the data, so it's called data, as a bitmap. So the data can be in many different shapes and forms, but we want to get it as a bitmap. Now the thing is, data is a nullable, and extras is a nullable as well, so we need to force on wrap it here, and then we have the thumbnail. Now we can go ahead and use that. So our image view, so IV image, set image bitmap can be our thumbnail because our thumbnail is a bitmap. And here, of course, writing it correctly will be a little better. So here we set the image of the image view to be the thumbnail that we get from the data that was passed to us from the on activity result. So pretty much when we press on this button, then we get to the camera. So that is here, set on click listener. So we click on the button, it checks, do we have permission? If we have permission, which we do, then start this intent, intent media store action image capture, which is this screen here, that it will be started as soon as the start activity for result is executed. Okay, so then it waits for the result. And once I select an image here, I press this button, then it goes back to this activity that we are at. So it goes back to our main activity and this on activity result is executed. So then it checks, is the result code, result code okay, which means that the selection worked out. And then was the request code that got you at that activity result, was it the camera request code? So where do we get the camera request code from? Well, the thing is we passed it here when we started the activity for results. So you can see here intent with the camera request code. And that is of course our constant that we have created here. Okay, so we just use it as a constant because we want to use it multiple times throughout the application or potentially use it throughout the application and it's just good practice to store it in a companion object. And then we can of course execute whatever we want to do if the result came back. Now the thing is, the result is of type data, but in this case, the data that we get is actually going to be a bitmap. So now we can take that bitmap and store it as a bitmap variable and then set our image view to be that bitmap. All right, and similarly, other selections work as well or other activity for result options work as well. So here you can, of course, use other types of intents. It could be an intent that we will use later on where we start an activity that we don't develop ourselves and this intent could go to third party activities as well. For example, we are going to use places later on, which is from Google, where you can enter a name of a place and it will display that place on the map. And we want to get the information from that place, for example, the latitude and longitude. And we want to get that, of course, in the activity that started the intent. So we are also going to use the same approach, which is start activity for result. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you know how to use the camera in your Android applications. And if you really like this video, then please hit that like button and also the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on our future Android videos. And I wish you a nice day. And by the way, check out one of those two videos that will help you even more.